Okay, welcome. Today, one of the topics that uh, I want to discuss or would like to discuss um, is attention. Is the um, the idea of attention, attention. Um, the Cambridge Dictionary defines attention as the act of directing the mind to listen, see, or understand, to notice. In order to learn anything, you have to pay attention. <laughs> so the act of directing the mind to listen, see, or understand, or notice. So directing the mind. Directing the mind. That's actually the definition of attention according to the Cambridge, the Cambridge Dictionary. When you think about this, you ask, well, maybe you ask yourself, I do, um, how many times have you actually learned how to direct your mind? Have you um, been taught as you were growing up how to direct your mind? Um, have you done practices that help you direct your mind? Have you um, had courses, if you went to school, um, on how to direct your mind? Um, and maybe they, maybe you have, right? Maybe if you went to uh, elementary school or middle school or high school, there were certain subjects that um, you were told to study. And that, in essence, is sort of like a direction of the mind, right? If I give you a geography book or an anatomy book i'm saying you know you need to read chapter one and so i'm asking to as the teacher saying you know we're going to have an exam on chapter one um, so you need to direct your mind right you need to pay attention you need to do something in regards to chapter one and then you're going to regurgitate the information back to me and i'm going to give you a score um we don't really think of attention, so we kind of go along life like this. Um, oftentimes, we don't really think of attention or even what it is, uh, because oftentimes it is grabbed by the external world. So it is pulled away, for instance, by the external world. So if you see any time that you need to direct something, right, there's a... Um, there's a uh, uh, in essence, there's there's a sort of like a vector. If that makes sense, whenever we direct, there's a direction. OK, so we need to direct, we need to instruct. It's sort of like, hey, you know, go out that way or go over there, you know, go right and then turn left um, with the mind. It's 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 like, you know, here, I'm going to give you some things to to try to pay attention to. Right, whether it's books or teaching you the alphabet when you're a kid or, you know, um, where to where to poop and pee so you don't do it on the, you know, you don't do it in your diaper anymore. Um, these are things that we're constantly trying to tell people, you know, here, this is what we're, this is what we need to do. Okay. Um, and so usually, usually uh, there's sort of like an external kind of like an external object that is present that actually grabs your attention, that actually pulls your attention, that actually directs your mind for you. Okay. Um, if there is, for instance, a loud bang sound that goes outside, that sound okay, just directed your attention to it. Okay, you might turn, you might open your ears a little bit, assess the situation, okay? An external, some sort of external sense, some sort of external object that is directing your mind or attention, all right? And oftentimes, because we're in this type of process, we don't really think of us being able to direct our attention. 
because we're constantly it's constantly being grabbed or attained by another source by something else the tv is on well the tv is on i'm going to pay attention to the tv right um the radio is on there's music going on um somebody's calling me on my phone there's another text message coming right there's all these external things that are sort of grabbing they're trying to grab my attention my attention is going to them and oftentimes i don't really feel like uh well the question is is who then is directing that who who is directing where the mind pays attention. I hope you say, well, I do. Right. I do. Yes, I've recognized that throughout life, there's been many times where there's a lot of external noise. There's a lot of external activity. There's a lot of external, you know, um, games. You can see them, fireworks, right? A lot of activity going on externally saying, you know, come here, pay attention to me, pay attention to me, pay attention to me, pay attention to me, okay? Um, and we've all paid attention to that. Right? I sort of see it as this, there's sort of like a center path, where right? I see it as sort of like there's this center path. And uh, along the center path, okay, let's say you're traveling down, you're traveling down this path, say so you're in a convertible, okay, a nice red convertible, traveling down the path. And, and to the left and right of you, there are, um, there's amusement parks, there's zoos, there's fireworks, there's clowns and dancing and all these sorts of things. And as you're traveling down this path, right, and every single one of these little things that you're traveling through is trying to is trying to grab your attention. Come on, pay attention to me. Come in. Come in. Welcome. Right. You can I, I sort of the 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 imagination I have is is, you know, like a jester, right, a clown trying to do something to you as you're traveling down this path and is trying to grab you. And we can all go into that and play in the circus or, you know, have a little fun in the magic shop or something like that. Um, but then we got to recognize that there's a path that, that that clown just, or jester or whatever it is, just took me off the path. Okay, this is this is how I envision it. Right? And, and this is infinite. The path keeps going. And the number of, you know, events that are occurring along the path is infinite and we can step off the path and go out and 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 play but knowing that that's a play knowing that that's a little game knowing that yep that clown just grabbed my attention and i'm gonna go and play in the circus for a little bit of time that little bit of time might be a second but it might also be 50 years okay um if that Right, that's an experience. We're having that experience, whatever it is. But our attention was grabbed by something, pulled off, and then we recognize, like, wow, this is what I've. I really haven't had any choice. I really haven't watched where I am paying attention or directed, right? Based on the Cambridge definition, directed my mind. My mind was grabbed. And I have been in this circus for the last two, three, four, five years, 10 years, whatever it is. Right? And we all go through this. Um, each of us has a different time that we're playing in the circus. And then we recognize that, oh, wow, this actually happens quite frequently. And this is what the world, this is, this is the world in front of us. And when we come to this question of who directs who, or what is actually directing your attention? Right, and hopefully saying, oh, I am. And you know, I do like to play with the clowns and I do like to go there sometimes. And I know that that's some experience that is a, let's say a sensory experience that I enjoy. And so it, I go, 
but then I come back. I recognize that that happens. Or I don't recognize that that happens. I've never understood how to direct my attention. I don't know even know what that means. Um, and therefore, every single external object that comes and tries to grab my attention, my attention goes to. And I'm often, uh, my attention is often going from one thing to the next, to the next, to the next, to the next. And I really have a hard time focusing on in, on anything. Um, but uh, that's just what I do. Okay. Um, and so attention, right, the direction of the mind, the direction of the mind, right, you are the director, you're the um, executive producer, you're the screenwriter, you're the director, um, you're the, the, the lighting, you are the uh, the the costumes. Right? You are directing, and so when we come to these practices, one of the most fundamental questions, fundamental practices, is where is my attention going? Where is my attention going? Even in the definition, notice, there was a notice, okay? Um, and part of this practice is actually learning how to direct your attention, actually learning how to um, expand that which you can direct your attention to, okay? Um, and recognizing that there is a conscious intention in where we direct our attention. And this is really important, okay? That there has to be, there has to be a conscious intention of where we direct our attention. That comes from us. That comes from each one of us individually. You know, I have a conscious intention right now to pay attention to this pen. All right, that's your choice, right? You're making that choice in that moment. You're making that choice. Okay. I have a conscious intention right now to pay attention to the sensations in my hand. I have the conscious intention to pay attention to my cell phone or to any social media site, right? When you are actually directing your mind to go and pay attention to something, be very careful in terms of the intention, the conscious intention that is going. Is there a conscious intention that is going towards the direction of the mind? And what is that conscious intention? Is that going towards growth, um, unity, compassion, kindness, love, balancing of the nervous system? Or is that going towards stress, disharmony, fear, anxiety, depression, whatever it might be. All right. There's a few, um, you know, adages even in neuroscience, right, um, which are used, which are used, right, um, which I like. And those include, um, you know, where, where your attention goes, energy flows. Where your attention goes, energy flows. Okay. Um, where energy flows, right, uh, neural connections grow. Where your energy flow, neural connections grow. All right, so imagine that, right? 
where we are actually directing our attention to will actually result in neural connections. Okay. How, how freaking cool is that? Also very dangerous, right? <laughs> it's cool, but it's also like, oh my goodness. Wait, you mean that I actually have some control of the neural connections that are made in my brain, my spinal cord? Absolutely. Right. And some people, when they hear this goes, no, 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 that's too, you know, I don't have that sort of, I don't have that sort of, because, because the, the, they don't want to feel as if they are actually in control of the situation that they're in. The, the, there's no way that I could have created this. This came. Okay. Or there's no way that I can get, I can try to actually get out of this. There's no way that I can actually shift out of this. All right. What the neuroscience actually is showing is that there are, there are ways, there are possibilities. Okay. If we can learn to shift our attention learn to shift where the energy of the neuronal circuitry is going by using our attention, we can actually slowly shift the neuronal circuitry. Now, does this happen overnight? No. Okay. Some people have had, we can find some sort of, uh, some people have had these spontaneous shifts. I even published a, a paper on a lucid dream on a person who had a lucid dream at the VA, right? He was a VA patient, had very chronic pain, severe, was on like 150 milligrams of morphine or something like that, had a lucid dream. And the next day after this lucid dream, had absolutely no pain. And it's documented in the VA notes, which is why we chose to publish it as a case report. Okay. And he states that he had a lucid dream. He was he was told in the dream that his connections were being rewired. That his myelin, which is the, the coding of the nerves was was uh, was being rewired was helping to rewire the connections in his brain and spinal cord and he vividly remembers these connections rewiring in his lucid dream and wakes up and has no pain it's documented in the va medical records the next day because he was so certain that his pain was gone, he shows up to the VA pharmacy and drops off all his pain medication. And it's documented in the chart okay. that patient returns such, such and such number of tablets of this really strong opioid medications because they need to keep track of all this stuff. Okay. And then comes to um, comes to clinic and says, I have no more pain. We go, what? Huh? What do you mean you have? All right. So we decided to publish it, you can find it uh, on the web. Um, the VA is uh, the Veterans Administration, so it's uh, it's the uh, medical system in the United States that takes care of um, of veterans and their families. Um, so if you want to read it, you can send me a email and I will send you the PDF. It's a fascinating story, and it it goes into neuroplasticity and how possibly a uh, a lucid dream, how this person was sort of doing certain practices, um, but then how the lucid dream was sort of the, the big shift that allowed um, 
the, uh, the individual to make a, uh, a, a big shift in behavior, um, in physiology, pain, et cetera. Okay. So um, <clears throat> in this, right, when we start to understand that we actually have control of our attention, that just because an object appears on the outside, I don't need to actually pay attention to it. Okay, that it's my choice. All right. A lot of times we feel like, oh, I got to, here's, you know, here's this thing I got to, it's coming in, I got to pay attention to it. It's my choice. I am driving down the, driving down the road. I'm in my, I'm in my center, neutral, grounded state. And all of a sudden, right, all the, all the circus is going on. My choice, right? I, we can see it all. It's there. Looks fun. But it's my choice. Okay. And, and this game or sort of a game that we can play of directing your attention. <laughs> where, where am I going to direct my attention to right now? Right. And every moment asking yourself that question. Where am I going to direct my attention to? Where am I going to direct my attention to right now? Where am I going to direct my attention to right now? Where am I going to direct my attention to right now? Where am I going to direct my attention to right now? And as you start asking yourself this question, right, you start recognizing that you actually do have this power. This is probably one of the biggest powers that you have is not only acknowledging that you can direct your attention and knowing that you can, but then choosing what to direct your attention to. All right. I remember uh, Ram Das once said, he living a very sort of stressful, unhappy life. And then one day he woke up and he just said, he just said, I just realized that there was something more interesting to pay attention to. Right? It was just more interesting to pay attention to this as opposed to this. Right? So what is it, right? What is it that, that we can learn to pay attention to that is more interesting for us, that is healing, that goes towards growth and light and compassion and kindness and love and unity, as opposed to separation, hatred, fear, depression, loneliness, right? What is it that we can actually learn to pay attention to? What is it that we can pay attention to? What is it that we can actively, consciously, intentionally choose to say, this is what I'm going to pay attention to. This is what I'm going to pay attention to in every moment. Not just for the two minutes that you're doing your meditation, but in every moment of the day. All right. And this is when you recognize the power of your attention, okay, things will start to uh, blossom. Things will start to change. Things will start to shift. Right? It might not be overnight. Might be. You might sleep better that night. Okay, but slowly, slowly, right? You recognize the energy of 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 of, of, of attention, right? what we give energy to, right? What we give energy to, just know it in your own experience, right? What you give energy to, what you give attention to, what happens? It oftentimes grows, okay? So if I'm giving energy to distressing thoughts and feelings and emotions, what's gonna grow? Distressing thoughts, feelings, and emotion. Okay, it's sort of like nutrition in a garden. 
got to, you know, what is it that we're choosing to feed? What is it that we're choosing to, to, to give energy to, right? In a garden, it's the sun, it's the nutrients, it's water. What am I choosing to water? The plants that I probably choose to water will probably grow. Okay, as long as they're getting sun, if it, if it needs sun. All right. The thoughts and ideas that I choose to pay attention to are probably going to grow. They are going to gain energy. All right. When they gain energy, then they have more potency. They have more power. All right. This is... our choosing this is this is under our control okay very 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 important very important to understand this very important to have practices like mindfulness practices where we can learn to direct our attention learn to direct our attention When we, um, when we are doing a practice, okay, of mindfulness or meditation, one of the things that you might rec- one of the things that you might um, notice is spontaneous movements of attention. You might be choosing to focus your on your breath. And all of a sudden, you have this conscious intention. You have this conscious intention. I'm going to focus on my breath, right? Focus on my breath. And then all of a sudden, boom, right? Spontaneous change. You're like, where, where in the world did that come from? <laughs> I, forgot to, I forgot to pick up my daughter from school. Oh yeah, okay, I gotta go, right? <laughs> um, there's these spontaneous movements of attention, okay? If this is, this is natural, right? We can actually learn how to train that though in this, in this practice where you're choosing to focus on something In the periphery, you might notice that your attention is almost as if it's trying to be grabbed. You just simply notice it, oh, and you come back to whatever you're choosing to pay attention to with a conscious intention. If if your mind does go, perfectly fine. That's what the mind does, especially in practice. As soon as you recognize, come back. Okay. Oh, I was taken. Oh, interesting. Wow. Look how quick that happened. It was so subtle. I didn't even notice it. It was so subtle. I didn't even notice it. And here I am thinking that I'm in this really deep meditation, but what I'm doing is I'm actually planning lunch because I really want those pickles on that sandwich. And you go, that's... (laughs) It's so funny that I'm thinking about pickles right now. Right? And then that's another train of thought. This goes, how is it that I'm thinking about pickles when I should actually be focusing on my attention? And I'm in this group right now doing this meditation. Everybody else is doing it so much better than I am. Right? All these, you see all these uh, spontaneous movements of attention? I'm thinking about pickles. I bet you the other person is in such a deep state. I'm so jealous. I can never get there. This is so crazy. Oh, wait. You know what? Let me just come back to my breath. (laughs) Right? Comparison, judgment, my pickles, your mouth starts watering, right? You put it all away. I got to get those pickles. And everybody else does it better than me. All through, what was it all through, right? All through, all through a this, here I am, spontaneous movement of the attention, boom, 
pickles, lunch takes me to this. Why am I thinking judgment of the thinking about lunch, judgment of my ability to meditate and practice mindfulness, coming back, thinking I'm doing it, putting it all down, throwing it all away. And now the pickle just grabbed, just pulled me away. And now I'm eating my lunch. All right. So noticing that is actually, that's the number, that's the number one step is noticing those spontaneous movements of my attention, right? For short periods of time, we're good. For sustained periods of time is actually when it's really difficult. What we want to try to build is really that sustained ability to focus attention. And then what you notice, what happens is that we practice this focused attention. And as we practice the focused attention, our attention, our capacity to hold more increases such that any subtle movements of our attention or anything that comes in subtly just is no longer interesting, just exactly like Ram Dass said. Like it's just no longer interesting and it just doesn't have that power to come in. Pickles become, uh, if we need to get to it, we will get to it later. Thank you. Back. Okay. The thought, the worry thought, sort of like bouncing. It's almost like it's like you see it. It's kind of like, you know, your peripheral. You have the peripheral lenses. You see it, you know, it's coming in. And then all of a sudden it's like, it bounces off the periphery. It's like, boom. Okay. And then you don't have to like, um, it's not like you're like blocking them out. For instance, they're present in the periphery, but they're not, they're not, they have, ze they have like 0 0.0001 energy to them. Now, at first they might have 50% energy to them. Right. But as we do this practice, what you start noticing is that you start actually, you know, you recognize that something's coming in, boom, come back. It, dis it, 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 it disappears, comes in, disappears, comes in, disappears, comes in, disappears. And then slowly, slowly, there's less energy because you're not actually directing your attention. There's less energy that's associated with those sort of peripheral distractions that are always present. And then they don't, they just don't have enough energy to pull us away from our conscious attention that we're choosing to practice with. Okay. I hope that makes sense. So our, um, our practice today will be uh, a bit of a, um, of a body centered practice. Okay, in terms of recognizing the breath in different parts of the body, right, as we go from, okay, as we do this practice of consciously shifting where we are paying attention to, to the sensations of the breath in the body. Okay. That, for instance, if I ask you to pay attention to my hand right now, you can pay attention to my hand. If I ask you to pay attention to your feet and the sensations in your feet, you do something. Right. Right. And now you're paying attention to your feet. Okay. The computer sounds were made up by me, but something did. So you did something. Right. Where you went from my hand to your feet. Right. Feet. Got it. Okay. And then you can go to your, to your, to, you know, what you're tasting right now. And you're like, oh, that wasn't, I wasn't, per, I wasn't paying attention to what I was tasting until you asked me to pay attention to what I was tasting. And now all I can do is taste the saliva in my mouth, which is really gross. But I wasn't even, it wasn't even in that sphere of attention until you told me to, right? So that is just a perfect example of like, beep, 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 beep. Right? You went from one to the other to the other in two seconds. All right. So this practice is going to be about going to different parts of the body. And then slowly 
seeing if we can merge those parts of the body to the whole body. Right. And recognizing that we are going to have those peripheral, the, 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 uh, you know, the attention grabbers from the periphery. We're going to have the circus. We're going to have the plays. We're going to have the jester. We're going to have the clown trying to come in. Right. And if we go and play for a little bit, that's perfectly fine. No reason to judge at all. Just come back. As soon as you recognize that you are playing, just come back. Sensation in the body of your breath. All right. Okay, so let's start with a finding a comfortable posture. A posture you feel relaxed yet alert. Closing your eyes if you feel comfortable closing your eyes. If not, having a soft downward gaze as you're gazing off on the horizon. And taking two or three deep breaths. And with each inhale, Bringing in the present moment as best you can. And with each exhale, releasing any tension that you may feel in your body, mind or spirit, even if it is the intention of releasing the tension. And if you feel like you need to move or find a more comfortable posture, this is a good time to do so. And now with conscious intention, choosing to direct our attention to the sensation of our breath in our belly in our belly as you breathe in and breathe out what sensations do you notice in your belly due to your breath and paying particular attention to those sensations. Do you notice your belly rising and falling? Is there an expansion and contraction? Do you notice any sensation in any of the organs in your belly? Your skin, the contact your skin is making with your clothes, the sensation of that as you breathe in and out. And if your mind wanders, that's perfectly fine. Coming back to the sensation of the breath in your belly.
where we're choosing consciously to pay attention. And you may even notice subtle distractions, those spontaneous movements of attention. And for this practice, just choosing to pay attention to the sensation of the breath in your belly. And now directing your attention to your right or left hand. And noticing the sensation in your hand of your breath. As you breathe in and breathe out. Do you notice any sensation in your hand of your breath, paying particular attention to them? Do you notice any expansion and contraction? Do you notice any tingling, any sort of sensation? And if you don't notice any sensation at all, that is perfectly fine as well. Simply recognizing your breath going to your hand. now coming back to the sensation of your belly, of the breath in the belly as you're breathing in and out. Now going back to the sensation of your hand, of the sensation of your breath in your hand. Now can you open your attention to include both the sensation of your hand and your belly. Opening your sphere of attention ever so slight to include the noticed senses from your belly as you breathe and your hand as you breathe, including all the sensations from both body parts in your attention. You may notice that you're going from one body part to another, and that is perfectly fine. 
and then you may notice that they merge, sort of a coalescing. The attention expands and you're holding both your hand and your belly in your attention. And from here, seeing if you can include the sensation from the other hand for both hands and your belly. Can you increase your attention to include the sensation of your arms and your belly? Now including the sensation of your chest your arms and belly. As you breathe in and out, paying attention to the sensation of our chest, arms and belly all as one. All the sensations coming from these body parts. Can you include the sensation of your legs and feet? Your pelvis, legs and feet, your belly, chest and arms, all breathing in unison, just as a sensation, your legs, pelvis, belly, chest, and arms, a sensation of the breath going to all these body parts. now including your whole body, your neck and head, the sensation of your whole body breathing, noticing any subtle distractions or spontaneous movements of attention, and just choosing not to pay attention to them, not to direct energy towards them. Directing energy towards the sensation of the breath throughout your whole body. From head to toes. To hands and feet. Arms, chest, belly, legs. Your whole body breathing. Consciously directing your attention to the sensation of the breath as you feel it in your whole body.
now taking two or three deep breaths, really accentuating that sensation of your breath through your body, noticing the sensation as your breath deepens. And opening your eyes if your eyes were closed. Reorienting yourself to your room and surroundings. Moving and stretching if you need to stretch. Just reflecting on your practice today.